What's up, YouTube? Top City 5401 here, and I'm live in the man. It is smoky and hot outside where I live, and my man cave is like the safest place. So I'm just chilling here. It's not a bad place to chill. I'm just giving you guys a quick look around. There's my living room in the background there. But anyways, figured I'd do a raw rookie rummage or a raw insert rummage this time around. There we go. And I pulled a box off the shelf with my collection. And I got some of my Bonds inserts. So I'm going to get started here. I figured maybe I'll show off some... Uh, some FLIR inserts to start with. And what's up, Ron? What's up, Greg? What's up, uh, John? We've got a bunch of guys in here. If you guys are watching this archived, I am doing this particular video live. I know a lot of you guys might look at these FLIR cards and wonder, well, what's so special about these? But back in the day, FLIR Tradition did a whole parallel set where their cards were numbered. They did like a glossy Tiffany version, similar to that of Topps from the 80s. So some of them were numbered to 200. I think a lot of these are numbered to 200. And then the following year, I can't remember which ones. Yeah, then they start numbering them to 100. So these are all the Tiffany version of the Fleer Tradition cards. So what's up Raiders Nation? Love your man cave, by the way. If you guys haven't checked out Raiders Nation, you got to check his man cave out, man. But there we go. Uh, this one, uh, this is one of those FLIR inserts. It's a, like a mini, but this one has a gold stamp right there. And maybe this video will be good for people that aren't familiar, real, real familiar with the, a lot of the 90s and early 2000s insert cards. And so, again, guys, I'm just going through some of my FLIR cards here. Oh, you can hear my cards falling over. Here's a nice one. This card's like warning pack. It's embossed. It's a pretty cool card. There's like a, a Gaudi look. Again, Fleer must have... Here's a couple of Gaudi looks. Well, no, that's like an old school Fleer, and then that's like an old Gaudi look. That's a red parallel. That one's numbered to 500. There's also a version numbered to like 1936 or something. Then here's a popular set here. Fleer Zone. This is a nice shiny set that FLIR put out for a couple of years. But that one's awesome right there. And then another zone. This one has like that hollow foil kind of technology to it. But these are nice inserts from back in the day. Look at that shine, right? <laughs> and then you got the uh, diamond tribute. That's another nice one right there. Uh, Danny, I guess, uh, what's up? <clears throat> That's a long name. I just caught that caught your name just, uh, at the very end there. Diamond Tribute, another Diamond Tribute. And then here's some Fleer Tiffany's from the mid 2000 or the mid nineties, excuse me. And these are kind of cool here. What's up, Ray? And then there's the, uh, the the Tiffany with like the hollow foil stamping. So Fleer made all kinds of interesting parallels that a lot of a lot of collectors may or may not be aware of. And then this one here, this is a Soaring Stars from Fleer 97, but this is the glowing version. There's a non-glowing version, and then this one is the glowing version. These are tougher to find. And this variation wasn't really known until recently. And there's speculation that when Fleer was making these, one, like they just had different foil that they were using in the background and they just happened to change it towards the end of production. And these are a lot harder to find. But it's been coined the glowing variation on that one. I'm not still don't, I'm not I've, I'm not 100 percent sure if that was a production issue or if it was purposely done. Oh man, so 
Um, I, let me see. Someone's asking me a question here. Let's see if I can pull it up. Um, so remember the great sports asks a question. So quick question, Nate. What makes a card, a box card versus an album card just as you get them? Or it, I, or is it more value-based? It's kind of like there's all kinds of different um, different reasons why I might put a card in an album as opposed to a box. Here's a really nice card here. This is from... I think it's Fleer Ultra. Uh, Diamond Immortals. Beautiful card there, man. Die cut, shine. Tough pack odds. Love that card. Kind of an underrated card, in my opinion. I probably picked this card up for like 20 bucks back in the day. I think if that were to go to auction now, it'd probably sell well over 100 Here's a cool die cut card here. Man, these cards are just amazing. A lot of it uses like acetate, die cut, like multiple technologies. That's what you get from the 90s, guys. A lot of times you get multiple technologies. But to kind of answer the question about like what goes in an album versus what goes in a top loader, a lot of it might be based on like what I paid for the card or like this card here, for example, doesn't have a ton of value, but it's, it's a die cut card and I just don't want to put it in a binder. So this probably would be a binder card if it wasn't die cut like this. But, yeah, I mean, you can't put this card in a binder here. And then something like this. I don't know. It's just a cool card. If I like a card or if it's a fragile card, I'll put it in a top loader. A lot of times value or rarity. Like this one here is numbered out of 125. So, I, you know, I wouldn't put a card number to 125. I think if it's numbered... Depending on what year, but the cutoff is like probably about 500, unless it's a newer card, and then it's like 250 or 300. I won't put them in my binders. This card is neat. This just exemplifies what is so cool about 90s cards right here, is this is actually made out of wood, printed on wood. The whole card's not made out of wood. It's just a real thin veneer. The back of its cardboard, number to four ninety nine, and then this card here <clears throat> is from Toys R Us, and it actually, when they were originally distributed, it was like on a big notepad, and there were like multiples, and you get them at Toys R Us, and there's like a thing at the bottom. I've seen them on eBay before, intact, where you fill out something, and you could enter, you could be put into the Diamond Skills Club from Toys R Us. But this is just the top half of it. So the part that you send in is like perforated down here. Kind of a cool oddball piece there. And I love that FLIR tradition. Like 55, 56 tops look. That's a cool card. Here's a nice one. Uh, baseball rules from FLIR Ultra. Nice die cut. Like something like this I wouldn't want to put in my album. And then th this is a tough one here from Fleer Ultra. I think I traded a Zach Wheeler autograph that I pulled out of a blaster box for, for this card a long time ago with a, uh, with a YouTuber. And Zach Wheeler was on the Giants at the time and he got traded to the Mets. So then I traded it with some guy that had this Bonds card that I didn't have. So I was glad to add that one to the PC. And then a Diamond Skills, uh, that's the Gold Medallion Edition. So, got that one. And Fleer Ultra, as many of you guys know, they had the diamond or the uh, gold medallion like this. And then on their base cards, they, all, they also had one called the platinum medallion. Love that. Like this one's a gold medallion here. That's a gold medallion. The hitting machines. Here's another fantastic card. The Hitting Machines Gold Medallion from 96. That card is just beautiful. That's what makes it the Gold Medallion right there. The regular one just says Fleer Ultra. And these are, I think, 10 times harder to pull than one with the Gold Medallion compared to the one without. This Thunderclap, one of my favorite cards, and there is a Gold Medallion version of it that I need to track down. I just haven't gotten around to 
getting this card in the gold medallion, but just beautiful card. Look at that lightning, how it just pops through that purple. Just beautiful. Oh, man. <laughs> Somebody asks, how far do you think Bonds could hit a baseball with the best metal bat in the world? Who knows, man? 600 feet easily. Especially those composite bats. Here's another one. I mean, this card here is not an expensive card, but it's just so beautiful that I don't want to put it in my binder. I love this card. It's probably like a, maybe like a $10 card or something, but it's just beautiful. I might have doubles of that one. So if I do, it's probably in my binder. And then prime leather. Here's, here's one of those platinum medallions that I was telling you guys about. So only on the uh, flagship card in the FLIR Ultra set will you find the platinum medallions. But they're tough. This one is, I think they're numbered. Yeah, this one's numbered to 99. That's a nice one there. And then I got a few more platinums. Look at that beauty. Nice card there. Nice die cut platinum medallion. And then another flagship. That's a platinum medallion. So I got a few of those. And then like this one here, again, to kind of answer the question about what I put in a box versus binder. Normally a card like this would be in my binder, except that it's the way that it's die cut. I don't want it to to move around and get messed up. So I just put it in my box. But again, it's probably like, it's not that valuable of a card, but it is a gold medallion version. Same with this one, same die cut. So I just put it in the box. There's a, a diamond producer. This particular year, they, they this is like a, a set that you would see a lot from FLIR Ultra. But this is made out of canvas, this card. They kind of did a lot of experimenting with the diamond producers. Bonds was in the, the two sets in like 97 and 98. And then this, I've shown this card a bunch of times. But the black on the border is made out of felt. And then the, the brown in the background is made out of wood. And then you got the hollow foil here. So you got like three different things going on with this card. You got the hollow foil die cut piece with the wood background and then the felt around the perimeter. This card is just beautiful. Love this card. One of the, one of the best insert sets from the 90s right here. I mean... The fun thing about 90s cards is you could say that about a lot of their cards. Here's a nice acetate with that foil technology kind of mixed in. Beautiful card there. FLIR really did a lot of fun things with their cards. Here's the photo effects gold. This is one of those parallels where the only thing different between this card and the base one is it says gold and it's numbered there. And that might be gold too. I don't, I'd have to look at the, the regular one, but this is a, a insert parallel, a cool card there. Home run Kings, gold medallion. Again, the, you could always tell the gold medallion cause it's, it's like a circle instead of just saying FLIR Ultra, another gold medallion. There's the regular. That's an older insert. These are tough. This one's real tough. The gold medallion version of this one is very, very, very tough. I think this was a retail-only exclusive from one retailer. I can't remember who, but this particular gold medallion was very, very tough to find. And I was glad to add it into my collection when I did. Hall of the Hull gold medallion, RBI Kings. They didn't make a gold medallion version of this one, or Home Run King, excuse me. This one, I wish I had the gold medallion version. And then this card here is interesting. This is from 1996 Emotion 
XL. And in my opinion, this card is what started the uh, EX series. Right there, EXL. But this uses similar technology as the uh, EX. So cool card there. And this was an insert from 96, a motion EXL. And it kind of spawned off the, the EX. And I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. I got, um, well, here's one of them. This, this one isn't, this is a, the FLIR got lazy this year with the EX essential credentials. They, they didn't do a whole lot. They numbered them to 299. But then the following year, they went back to the way they did them before where you got the essential credentials now and then. And so I got the now and then. So Ray, I collect Ichiro is asking, am I safe from the fires? Let me just put it to you this way, guys. Right now in California, where I live in Northern California, is probably the closest thing to hell that I could ever imagine because it's like 90 degrees out. And when I go outside, it's like smoky and it's so smoky. I cannot turn on my AC and I can't let any fresh air in the house. So it's like this stagnant hot air in the house, but I can't let any air circulate because or else in my house will smell like a campfire. So it's miserable. And fortunately for me, the man cave is actually the most comfortable room in my house right now. So I've just been like locked in my man cave for the last week or so. And I have really, I mean, I have chronic asthma and it's the only thing I can do to save myself from the, it's just, it's just horrible out here. Let's just put it that way. But as far as like my house burning down, no, my house is not, um, it's not like close enough to where it's in danger of burning down. The, how close are the fires? They're close enough to where, I mean, like the one in Guerneville and Armstrong Woods, that's probably, as the crow flies, maybe 15 miles from my house. And then the one in Fairfield and Vacaville, Winters, that one as the crow flies is probably... 30 miles from my house, 25. But the smoke is just crazy. Here's that nice cut above insert. Man, that card is beautiful. And then another EX insert. And then this one here. This had a stated print run of 30. But when FLIR went bankrupt, man, this card popped up everywhere and i know there's way more than 30 copies of this card now there were only 30 copies that were distributed in packs but the thing is is the ones that were replacement cards look identical to the ones that were issued in packs so i bet you the population on these is closer to 60 and they're not numbered unfortunately or else people probably have a better idea how many there are Here's a cool card. Um, favorites for Fenway. Obviously, when the All-Star game was in Fenway Park, that was a legendary All-Star game, man. I remember that All-Star game real well. I remember Mark McGuire went off in the home run derby. Hall or nothing. I mean, EX made some great inserts, guys. Look at that. It's like this one's like acetate, die cut. Really cool looking card. Yeah, so Ron, I'm sorry to hear that some of your friends have lost their homes. I know some people, not this year, but the previous two summers with all the firestorms, I, I know a lot of people that have lost their homes. My stepdaughter, who's living with me, um, her home may get burnt down. We don't know yet. We'll see. And then my uncle might lose his house. I, I'm, I'm hoping he doesn't, but that could happen as well. So we'll see what happens. 
This one is a cheap seat treats. These kind of like pop up and it looks like you're sitting down on like an old school stadium seat. Kind of a cool set from EX. What's this one here? Oh, I don't even remember the name of this set. Um, anyway, I don't know. These are tough. I mean, it's numbered to 250, but these sell really well. They sell for like more like a card number to 50. And this one here, this is a. Um, these cards were originally, well, it, th this one has a, the tab right here on the hat. And most of them, the card is cut off right there and kind of rounded. So this is the hat tab variation, but Fleer found that these were getting damaged, so they changed the way they cut them. And there's a, anyway, if you guys know 90s cards, you'll know how tough this card is. It's kind of hard for me to go into detail about it, but that one's pretty tough. And Flare Showcase, Row Zero. So yeah, I know someone that lost their house in the Paradise Fire. I went to high school with her. She lost her home. She was, her, her home was just a chimney by the time that fire went through in paradise. Anyway, I, I know people watching this archived, just so you know, it's um, 2020, the year from hell, and right now happens to be when all the fires in Northern California are going on. So, so people watching archive, I am responding to people commenting on the live feed. Um, here we go, a nice showcase. These are all numbered. That one's 175, and then they went to 150 the following year. These cards are tough, man. You just don't see them pop up anymore. All the all the, the 90s and early 2000s parallels and inserts are really, really tough to find these days. They just they're they're locked into collections like mine. There's one number two, uh, what is that? Four out of 150. Flare. Another flare. All these are numbered 175. Here's, this one's cool. This is a um, Flare Mystique. This is the gold. And the gold has gold on the nameplate. And, our, and on where the team is. I didn't know what the gold was for a while. Had to ask one of my friends. But that's a beautiful card. Thunder Boomers. Man, that's cool. I love it when they kind of integrate acetate with cardboard stock. Make it die cut. Use, you know, multiple technologies. FLIR was really, really good at doing that. They made a lot of cool sets like that. Here's one I really like. Uh, this set, they call it Blast Furnace, and it's almost like if you were to put powder-coated paint into a uh, Blast Furnace or maybe like glass or something, like powder-coated painted glass, the texture on this card is just really cool. It's unique. This is the only card like this, and it's from 96 Metal Universe, too. Really nice set. But like that card quite a bit. And then here's the embossed. This is a super boss. This is like the chrome parallel to the regular Circa boss. Fleer uh, experimented with the chrome technology a little bit on this one. And then another metal universe. Call it a mother load. Nice die cut. And then here we go with just some parallels from FLIR. More of those like numbered parallels. These are, they call it the platinum, FLIR platinum, all numbered, 201, 100. Anyways, those are cool. And then um, 
I like these a lot. These these sets are always neat. The uh, Fleer Premium. Man, like in the early 2000s, Fleer is making all kinds of sets. Premium. You got, there's a couple of premiums. I think they're numbered to 125. And then you got Fleer Focus. This is the green parallel. And then you got the purple. These were intended to be one of ones, but Fleer ended up putting tons of these in their sets. And they're not one. A lot of people, like if you're on eBay and you see these cards, they'll list it as a one of one, but, but they're not one of ones. Not even close. I don't know what happened with that. There's another Fleer Focus. More Fleer Focuses. Love that green one, number to 106, I believe. Or 306, excuse me. I know there's one one in here numbered to 106. Kind of interesting numbering. I don't know which one it is. Anyways, I guess it's not that one. I just picked this one up not too long ago. Maybe is it that one? Nope, 306. Huh. Yeah, I don't I can't remember. Maybe that was his um I don't know why they numbered it. It probably is a stat line, but I can't remember what the stat line was. Maybe this is it. There it is. So there we go. Here, here's one that with stat lines. So you got, <clears throat> here, I'll go over these real quick. The red one was for home runs. So how many home runs he hit in 2001? This is a 2002 release. So of course this one's numbered to 73. And then one was for RBIs and one was for batting average or something. So that's why there's these parallels. And then this one here, when I bought it, like when I was, I made a lot of, um, I, I, not necessarily collecting mistakes, but I was just like very, I didn't know the product as well as I, I know it now. But when I bought this card here, notice how it says it's 73, but there's no number here. And this is from the Fleer Bankruptcy. And this is a replacement card for this one. So if like you pulled this card and it was damaged, you contact Fleer Customer Service, they had extra copies that they would uh, replace the damaged copy with. And when Fleer went bankrupt, they sold all those <clears throat> replacement copies. And on this particular replacement copy, the numbering, it just says out of 73, but they didn't actually stamp it. I, I suppose that if you were to get it replaced, they would just replace whatever number was ruined with the stamp. But anyways, that's a, me kind of going off topic a little bit. I guess I'm just trying to explain the difference. So here's a couple of Fleer Authentic cards, different color, you know, like gray and gold. And then they're both numbered to different amounts. The old rainbow, right? The old rainbow, everybody knows about rainbows these days. More of these um, FLIR inserts. These are all like the ones low numbered. Yeah, like 100. That one's numbered to 100. FLIR Mystique. Number to 75. What's this one? I don't even know what that. that number. So they, they did all the, these parallels, FLIR. <clears throat> Do a lot of parallels to like 100 or whatever. Oh, man, yeah. And then the old FLIR hot gloves, right? This one's cool. It uses like a gold foil technology with the embossing. And then, of course, the die-cut hot gloves. My favorite year right here. That card is just cool, man, with, like, the fire in the background. Hot glove with the fire flames. That's cool. Fleer Gamers, gold parallel. I don't even know. What is this? God, they made so many sets. Rookies and greats, I guess, is what it's called. Box score. It's, this is funny. They made these minis. 
from box score and they had like the regular size card numbered to 100 and then they had the minis and they made a parallel mini to 100 as well so that's what these are and i'm glad to have both years with the regular and mini parallels all numbered to 100 little pennant action there that's a cool card that 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 is a felt made out of felt they only did this set for one year Fleur Avent but it's beautiful Beautiful set. Got that one, that one. So just cool inserts. I'm almost done with Fleer. And then if you guys want me to continue, I will. And if I don't see much interest, then I would just wrap it up with the Fleer Raw Rummage, right? Fleer inserts Raw Rummage. So here's a cool one here. This is a redemption card. Hey, what's up, Steve? And this was a redemption card for an autograph. So basically when you, you know, you send this in to Fleer, fill it out, and then they send you back the autograph version of this card. Well, there's only 50 autographs, so how many redemptions are out there, right? I'm really glad to have this redemption card. Just something kind of cool to collect, something different. And then Shining Stars. I know there's several different parallels of this one. The Hardball, this card is cool. This is a tough one here. Number to 50. And we got the Molten Metal Fusion. I got the whole rainbow <clears throat> on the Molten Metal Fusion. So we got the gold, or excuse me, the. Um, I think that one is Probably titanium, or no, it's, I forget the, I should know what the name of the colors are, but you got like a platinum blue, a silver, and then the gold. These cards are badass. These are like the EO portraits, but you can kind of see like with that in the background. Pacific made something similar to, to using this same technology where you you can kind of see the uh, silhouette of the player with the dot matrix laser inscribed in the card. And the gold one is laser numbered to 50 right there. So those are cool. And then, man, I got this one here. I wish, well, I got the Fleer Brilliance Gold, but the uh, 24 karat, man, that thing is just, imagine this card, but with like a hollow foil shine to it then i got the circa thunder rave that one's cool and i'll just finish up this row and that'll be that'll be it for today more circa thunder rave here what year is this one i think 97 yeah 97 these are numbered out of 150 and then this card here for you guys that remember the dugout access from, I think in 1999, the stock on this card is horrible. And these cards were like the cheapest product that you could pull from the year that they produced these cards. And they made this parallel set and it's called Inside Access. And these are numbered to 50. And this is an extremely tough pull because they made a version numbered to 50 of every player in the set. And plus it was from a cheap set that was like sold everywhere, kind of marketed for kids. So who knows how many of these managed to uh, survive when you got little kids uh, opening it. And they, you know, they're not going to notice the, the f that inside access is not easy to see unless you're looking for it, and then the numbering, you know. Who knows how many of those are actually out there in the wild, in the collecting world. Here's a cool card I picked up about a year and a half ago. It was high on my, uh, my list of cards to pick up, but it's a Rave Reviews die cut. This card is beautiful, man. Love that one. 
And then a few more, we got the Rave. So then these are all the Sports Illustrated um, extra editions cards from Fleer. And then the last one is a Ruby Skybox. So that'll do it, guys. I think I am, uh, had some fun just rummaging through my cards, talking about them a little. Hopefully, maybe uh, people that are getting into the 90s cards, maybe I could teach you a little bit about Fleer. So thanks so much for tuning in. And as always, until next time, happy collecting.